Welcome participants to the question and answer session of day 1. We are overwhelmed that the resource persons stimulated the participants to ask questions. We received feedback from the participants and they requested us for live streaming of the sessions. Since this FDP is organized in passive mode through YouTube channels, it was not possible for us. But we considered their request to some extent and requested the worthy resource persons to be the part of these sessions. The first session of day one was taken by Dr. Tanya Mandir on the topic Reimagining Teaching Literature Ingeniously. Second session was taken by Dr. Shalini Thakur where she talked about erudition by critical teaching. Here they are answering the questions asked by the participants. So let's march on to the question and answer session of day one. I hope uh, you enjoyed the faculty development program which has essentially been talking about how to teach creatively and what's new on the horizon so far as online teaching and specifically teaching in the times of COVID-19 comes into play. Well, uh, thank you for your feedback. I've gone through each one of them. Thank you so much. And I had uh, the pleasure of uh, being given your questions as well. And I've divided most of these questions into four different heads. So some of the questions were similar. So I've picked up the broader idea and I'll be discussing those. For example, uh, the first head I'm trying to cover here is the online teaching. The questions that I got was that what about students in rural areas or what about students in remote areas or about students who are busy helping their parents with so many household uh, works that uh, how do we engage with them uh, through online teaching. Well, I sort of begin by stating that uh, the truth is that there is a great digital divide in our country. So this is a fact. We cannot deny it. We cannot put it on the side. So, in fact, I was reading a newspaper article on economic, uh, sorry, in the newspaper economic standard. It's a May 1, 2020 article and I recommend that all of you should also read it. Uh, the title, the heading is Education in the Time of COVID-19, How Institutions and Students are Coping. It's got um, uh, such detailed statistics on the kind of percentage of students who were able to attend all these online classes or those who were not able to. So yes, um, this is true that uh, some of us have not been able to reach the rural areas or remote areas. But having said that, uh, I would also like to uh, reiterate here that necessity is the mother of all invention. So I came up ac uh, this, across this news items from Maharashtra and Kerala where the governments have used Doordarshan platforms and radio frequencies to ensure that all students are be uh, sort of able to participate in this learning which is again a distant learning now this is not online learning but distant learning and this has been specifically very useful for visually impaired as well so as we move forward in these very uncertain times and as we sort of understand and comprehend better the situation where we are talking only about online teaching I think we will be able to open up other avenues like I said last time with institutional support with government support where we will be able to engage with the students of the rural areas or remote areas and quite a few of you have asked me about asynchronous technology as well so let me put it like this that uh, when the teacher and student are offline that is a synchronous platform but a student can still access your articles your commentaries your material or your lessons even so in their own uh, in their own sweet time that uh, allows for that space and that freedom to learn at their pace at their time that is sort of asynchronous technology so they are able to complete their lessons they are able to complete their assignments and they use internet as a support tool. It is not uh, required for them to be there at that point of time when the class is going on. I am uh, sort of, I speak really highly of asynchronous 
platforms and technology it is quite empowering for both the teacher and the student uh, some of you have asked me about uh, podcasts so once again i've even given you a link it's a blog and it's very interesting blog uh, www.podcastinsights.com what is a podcast it is essentially an audio program so if i were to speak in the terms of or the jargon of uh, your technology then it is a digital audio file what you do is you record your lesson and then you can put it on any of the podcast uh, platforms for example i have my podcast platform anchor so it is it allows you to have an episodic structure that means one episode second and third and fourth episode so on and so forth the student can download this audio file to their uh, device and again the freedom of uh, being able to listen to it any time that they want okay this is very interesting somebody has posed a question uh, effective approach of teaching so uh, i will just say one thing never make your teaching about a topic because when you're there in the classroom whether it is real or virtual interaction discussion has a lot of advantage it yields the kind of results and attention that we are we want in fact i've again put up uh, this uh, source it's a stanford uh, education website resource which actually talks about what are the characteristics of effective teachers how do they make their teaching more effective and when it comes to more creative ideas of online teaching i believe that uh, uh it should be uh you don't have to be necessarily live or online right to be teaching them i believe it should be a blended learning that's the new word that's come up it should be a blended learning which allows for them to work on their own and come back to you once in a while once in a week once in a fortnight to discuss so that means uh you can use email you can use google classroom you can do use podcast you can use pre recorded youtube videos each to reach them before you go on to this detailed discussion class subsequently so then okay um when it comes to classroom like one of the questions was how do you keep students engaged for a one hour class so in most of the professional colleges you do have a one hour class so yeah i can only give you example from my own teaching in my one hour class it is 40 minutes of teaching and 20 minutes of attendance talk announcements or even sometimes difficulties interaction which is beyond what is being done in the class those 40 minutes of teaching i sort of interpose them with humor and sometimes one or two odd activities and sometimes the teaching starts with raising a few questions or pointing out a newspaper headline so that linking it to my teaching or or seen is that it keeps them sort of uh, stimulated when you sort of break the chain of only reading from the text or only you are talking and the students is not being given any space to speak of course then it comes to your feedback feedback from students who are not regular i think i do understand and appreciate what you're trying to say that i i agree that uh, to a certain extent when the student has not been in the class uh, how will he or she be in a place to offer a feedback but having said that i would also say sometimes such students also in their feedback try to pinpoint or underscore what was it about your class that did not sort of motivate them to come to your class we are all grown ups here i believe that uh, we are a, we can discern which feedback uh, is of value which feedback is not of value but at the same time i suggest we should take feedback from all students then somebody had asked me this very interesting uh, question that how do you teach poetry to class 2 students well my own son is in class 2 so yeah when i uh, most of his poems are you know when i look at what is he being taught i realize that their poetry is mainly about fluency or about rhythm or they are trying to sort of rhyme words together or repeating certain words so that 
the ideas are instilled in the mind of the student who's reading the poem. So here again, I'm giving you a resource. It's a very interesting um, um, betterlesson.com poetry. What is it? It is for teachers who are teaching primary grades that uh, what essentially are uh, is required for you to mark in poetry when you're teaching grade two, grade one, grade three students. All right. So yeah, some and again, um, another question was, what's the difference between a traditional class or a flipped class? Now see, I'll, I'll be very candid here. We can continue to give them as many fancy names as we want to. You call it a flipped class, you call it a blended learning class, whatever you may call it. This is for sure that we are changing the way we are teaching in classrooms now, especially in higher education. See, in uh, the flip, uh, I believe when it is elementary schools to high school, uh, traditional classrooms, which are sort of which use strategies like activities on and off or discussions on and off in the classroom, they are much better. But definitely a flipped class for university and college students who've already, they understand the basics of learning process. So one can try that. Now, I should have started this first. Like, what exactly is a flipped class? Flipped class is when you give your uh, lesson to the students to prepare. You ask them to come after having read that material to the class and then make space for discussion, questions, interactions, and practical problems, which is, so far as college and universities are concerned, I think very, very good, much needed, much required. But when it comes to elementary and high schools, it has to be sort of taken uh, uh, carefully and cautiously. All right. Now, there were people who asked me what exactly are metacognitive skills. So if cognition is thinking, yes, metacognitive skills or metacognition is thinking about thinking, organizing, sort of controlling your own thinking. So why, why I had used this idea when I was explaining why I believe poetry is very, very important to be taught. See, I think when we are looking at a poem from a student's point of view, please understand, one is very obvious that the student is examining the language, the student is examining the meanings. The second is that the student is also discerning poem's perspective, author's perspective, and putting it up against his or her own opinion, interpretation, or perspective. Please understand that when we read poems, I'm, I'm forgetting whose exact quote was this, but I read it somewhere, that every poem is a continuing conversation with its culture. It is querying the culture, it is amplifying the culture, or maybe rebelling against the culture. So when you put poetry uh, for these students on a page to read, so they are able to discern how thought, how perspectives over the ages, over the decades have changed. They are able to map their own progression. How are they thinking? How are they comprehending? Thereby leading to this uh, term, the word that I used, that they are able to develop their own metacognitive skills. And somebody had asked me this, how ambivalence, ambiguity, and how, what is ambivalence and ambiguity and how uh, poetry helps. See, if I were to explain to you ambivalence, I would say that it's a feature of feeling. And when it comes to ambiguity, I would say it's a feature of language. Ambiguity means that you are open to more than one interpretation, more than uh, one fixed idea of truth. Like you are happy with inexactness. Ambivalence on the other side is that when you look at something, there are mixed feelings. There are uh, contradictory ideas. So when you read poetry with college students, what you're offering them is a plurality of meaning, a plurality of understanding that there can be number of perspectives. Any given situation can evoke number of emotions and that there are no fixed rigid templates of meaning and truth. All right, another uh, uh, idea that I picked up from your questions was the periphery issues where uh, 
somebody had asked me how do you motivate students who come from dysfunctional families or you come uh, who are special students i do not have much to say on this except for two very important things that students with dysfunctional family backgrounds or their special students with some sort of learning disability you need to understand that there are two things that influence the motivation of these students one is your institutional culture and the second is your class culture it cannot just be one teacher in one class it has to be the environment it has to be the community which sort of motivates them together so most of the schools and colleges have now started taking on counselors who counsel both the students and the teachers and the administration to how to deal with such students how to motivate them towards learning all right uh, another question was like uh, literature and technical courses how do you teach literature do you teach them and uh, how this teaching of technical courses will be affected for good or bad by uh, sort of prescribing literature before i answer this question i because i'm a literature teacher myself i believe very strongly that we are not uh, professionals or uh, we are not uh, technical students uh, uh, living in a vacuum or an isolation we are each carrying a story of our own dreams our aspirations our conflicts our struggles our weaknesses and strengths and it's very important that even the students who are taking on these technical courses or professional courses they are made to uh, learn about different ways of looking at the world and sometimes even the truths of the world through the window of these stories that literature offers uh, i have a few suggestions there was a question specifically like what can we teach to engineering students that communication skills is the best of course we need them to be proficient in language we need them to be able to put forth their opinion but at the same time we do need them to be rational sensitive human beings um uh, there's a novel by andrew muller 2011 and uh, the name of the novel is pure and it's about a young engineer in uh, pre revolutionary france who sort of dreams of uh, redesigning the society then our very own kamla markandeya she has written uh, the coffer dams and it's about a british engineer who who brings his family to india to build a dam and this uh, perceptible ta- tension between technology and nature and what all you have to sacrifice in the uh, um, name of uh, development so again as uh, professionals and technical students uh, i think students need to understand about how where technology is located with a ways climate change with a ways development with a ways your nature another very interesting um, is kinsman and foreman uh, it is by if i'm um, not wrong tm aloko he's an uh, afro uh, ra- african writer and it's a uh, it's a story about system and its corruption so i don't know i believe that uh, just because we are teaching a technical course doesn't mean that we leave out one of the most beautiful dimensions of human development is uh, the literature that we have come up with over the centuries another question that i got was like how do you divide a course curriculum in a science subject and how do you let students assume i have underlined assume because uh, i i i sort of had a difficulty understanding this question so my understanding of this word assume is that you are saying that how do we take for granted that whatever students material we give to them whatever they have read their interpretation of it is correct uh, see let me tell you that when we i say use uh, the idea that i gave for the flipped classroom when i said that offer them material before they come for the class specifically in online teaching uh, environment please understand that what we are offering them is a prerequisite knowledge right for your discussion in the classroom we are offering them videos or articles or maybe even blogs 
so that they have read about it when they come to the class we are not saying even for a minute that we they can do it all on their own they cannot do it all on their own we know that it's just that when we give them material we are initiating them into that uh, sort of thought zone where uh, having looked at the video read the article they come to the class with questions with at least basic understanding of what we are going to take up in the class uh, Again, I can give you that uh, there are YouTube uh, channels, Science with uh, Tyler DeWitt or Edutopia. They are very interesting videos which are sort of for mainly for uh, uh, this uh, elementary and high schools and some of them can be used for even college students. They are very, very interesting. You also have a number of people writing blogs on how to integrate technology uh, and offer blended learning. So I suggest you please do search those as well all right uh, so these were some of the tips that people had asked me like uh, number one preparation before the class see like i said when i take on that i have to finish like i said um, last uh, uh, last presentation i discussed about how i finished my module on poems so i had put out the podcast let's say uh, I did a poem, The Hanging Judge by Ivan Boland. So I put out a podcast. I put out a YouTube video of Boland's interview. I put out a blog which discussed Boland's poetry. And then I put out two articles for them to go through what Boland's poetry is essentially about. So after doing this, that means I've also gone through all of this material. Then we come to that online class which happened subsequently right in that point of time in that class i have gone through this material my students have gone through this material and we are able to integrate different ideas because each my podcast is saying one thing the articles are saying another thing the blog is saying another thing the youtube video interview is saying another thing so you're able to integrate so preparation also helps you not only are you looking at the sources yourself you're also able to look at different threads that each source is each source is introducing so yeah when i prepare before my class i need to take on everything the biographical the factual the creative everything You've asked for more examples of reimagining and reinventing. Um, I was thinking that they are very like they are very ordinary when I put them in words. They are very very ordinary. For example, I'm linking this to the last one. How do I complete my course curriculum on time? Uh, in, like most of the time, I've always believed that teachers believe that course curriculum is their burden. I have even reimagined my understanding of course curriculum being my burden. I start my semester by make, discussing how are we going to finish a syllabus, how many classes. At the end of every week, we discuss, okay, I've done this much. We're still left with this much to go. We need to hurry this up. So I believe every time I make my students feel that they're part of the team, that we are working in tandem to finish this course curriculum, which both of us have to finish. It is just not my job. That is their uh, reinventing movies, Saturday evening movies, specifically related to my uh, course, uh, uh, prescribed coursework only. So that is their um, yeah, that's about it. And then you were, uh, somebody asked me how to inculcate reading habits in younger children. So when I looked at this question, I assumed that uh, because I've been told that the number of school teachers were attending this FDP. So I assume that this is for uh, some of the school children point of view that you wanted to know, ask this. Um, I again, like if any one of you is on Instagram and uh, or even if you're not on, or not on Instagram, you can Google it. Uh, you need to think of, you need to look up a lot of resources yourself. Uh, recently, they've started, like in June itself, they started with Mondays with Michelle Obama, the PBS Books group. So what they've done is every Monday, Michelle Obama comes on screen and reads out loud. You can show one or two of those videos, but there's so much you can learn with the way she's reading out to the students. Looking at your question, I was thinking, all right, my own school going children, they have their Google classrooms for all the material that the school's been posting. So I was thinking, why can't we as teachers start a reading classroom? 
where only students who are interested in reading who are uh, where you can put up a lot of resources lot of platforms for reading for example there is another mumbai bookstore uh, kahani tree they also have a considerable online presence and uh, they do a lot of uh, videos of reading together with students so you need to bring those into your online teaching then there's another a uh, facebook page and an instagram page that is magic key center and this lady has done wonderful work she is collaborated with radio mewat and what these people are doing uh, in the month of may um hamare former president who agar zakir hussain unki sari all these stories that he had written they were put up in hindi and they are beautiful stories and she narrates those stories so yeah we need to search a lot of platforms whereby we can attract young minds that uh, all right reading can be fun too and the role of a teacher and student you know we are living in times when uh, some of the cliched ideas uh, associated with uh, being a teacher or being a student are uh, sort of they don't hold the ground anymore they are not considered relevant anymore these are actually this generation is irreverent these are actually irreverent times so so in these times the role of a teacher i believe has sort of gone beyond the club some of us are teaching in residential universities so we it's outside the classroom what is happening to the student outside the classroom cannot be sort of put on the side or ignored you have to bring that to play as well when you're teaching them the role of the student has changed considerably um they are uh, trying to juggle a lot of things they are trying to juggle competitions they are trying to juggle studies they are trying to ju- juggle skill learning all of this uh, or in the time span when they are actually actively engaged with higher education as well so i think we need to become both uh, the teacher and the student more sensitive towards each other in these times the students need to understand that although all the information is available on the google but it is the teacher that's going to translate that information into wisdom every single thread of information or just one thread of information cannot be quoted or understood as wisdom it's the teacher's role to take on different threads of looking at the world of information and then weave them together into this uh, sort of tapestry of wisdom if uh, you can get the anal- analogy there and we need to become sensitive towards these students they are juggling a lot of things yeah they are juggling their own aspirations their parents aspirations and all the time trying to sort of be um, when i see my students in the law university i see they are trying to do moot court competitions they are trying to do debate competitions they are trying to do research article competitions or blog writing competitions they are even trying to do sports competitions so and they are also the conveners and coordinators of the student committees so they are doing administrative roles as well so there's a lot on their platter than there ever was on ours so we need to keep all this into mind when we approach our students i think uh, that should be all right thank you so much it was uh, um, it was fun to read all the feedback it was satisfying it uh, and the questions were also very interesting thank you so much i've given my email id to the organizers and it was part of my uh, powerpoint presentation as well if any one of you wishes to reach out to me through email please feel most welcome all the very best thank you hello everyone first of all thank you so much for your words of appreciation your suggestions and your valuable questions one such suggestion i would like to mention here and a very good one i must say that this presentation would have been face to face then there is no room of distraction left i agree with that uh, there is no substitute for face to face communication it is more effective um but uh, if i thought that if i take it in my presentation part then uh, this face value will definitely hamper the effectiveness of powerpoint presentation so that's why we didn't incorporate it 
but yes we are doing it now and uh, thank you for the suggestion uh, all your questions will be answered face to face uh, i have divided your questions into five sections technical subject student related general question teacher related questions uh, i'll be answering i'll try to answer all the questions i'll be a bit fast so kindly bear with that so that i can cover all the questions over here so the first question is from general question section how we can add online classes in regular curriculum even after covid 19 and uh, can we say that online teaching is as effective and beneficial as offline and would it be beneficial to continue online teaching in future also see uh, online uh, yes of course because we've learned something wonderful why not continue with it we have learned something graceful so why not continue with this so when uh, we have learned a new thing try to add this to your education system now when to use it that is very important during the holidays you can have the revision classes during the preparatory before the exams you can revise the whole syllabus through these online classes uh, this will really help because at that time students face plenty of problems and majority of our students study in the last preparatory holidays they don't study side by side only one to two persons study side by side so in that case the you can take up the zoom classes and you can re-explain the things to them so instead of getting the secondary information they'll get the primary one or if there is any difficult topic uh, which you are uh, you want to revise again but you don't have time in the college so there again you can conduct such classes on holidays say on sundays when you have two ho uh, holidays saturday and sunday you can give it on the sunday also so likewise yes you need to find a slot of the breaks uh, if we do it daily then it will be monotonous so for daily we have the physical classroom but then whenever we get the slot go ahead with the online classes another question was do you think online teaching can replace classroom teaching no not at all never it can only assist it but it cannot replace it the next question is related to the teachers i found the topic intent but i had the little doubt about practical applicability at the college level firstly your question is right because uh, we say so many things but they don't come into effect really but uh, believe me i have been practicing it from past 15 years and it work wonders i follow the same thing practice what you preach so when you enter your class don't keep this doubt in your mind if you keep the doubt you won't get that effectiveness and uh, then the task won't be accomplished just go and just try to explore it it will work wonders i assure you another questions how can we deal with special child or weak children uh, if a special child talk about special child special child uh, they require special teachers they are trained in that case with the psychological point of the child how to handle them and uh, even their parents are guided by those experts we have special people for them who guide those parents and such children uh, i myself is not guided in that case but yes if you have any such child in your neighborhood please give them this much liberty be patient observe them try to be comfortable with them and uh, try to understand them then how we can motivate teachers to adopt to creative teaching as they have preconditioned minds and closed mind how we can make them passionate how we can make them passionate about teaching see when we talk about the teachers there are many teachers who just believe that we should go to the class and take the class and just come back we've done our duty firstly this is not a duty or a job we should love it and uh, how you can be passionate don't limit it to one hour of your teaching when we limit it to one hour of our teaching in that case uh, when the teacher uh, enters the class delivers the lecture come you are just completing your course there give them this liberty let them approach you wherever they want in the college time uh, i myself uh, have given this permission to my students that they can talk to me anywhere in the campus if i'm standing with the teachers also they can ask me to come to one side they can request me to come to one side so i've given them that much liberty but only two to three students are confident enough to come like that so from last two years i have uh, innovated one idea they are not approaching me why not i so i have told them that whenever i'll meet them in the campus on any day i'll just be putting one question to 
any student of my class whosoever i meet first so and this they don't have to answer it very specifically but just to check their understanding level like i can ask them what is your uh, who is the main character of the story or what is the name of the chapter so in that case the student really enjoys it and then i mention their names in the class and give them the stars and other things to motivate them so they are not approaching we need to approach to them also so how can teacher depict that slow learners are understanding or not try to put them questions but don't put them questions uh, and don't let them feel this that they are identified as slow learners this should not be revealed to the students this should be clear in your mind your chart of your class of weak intelligent average this should be clear in your mind you should identify a student firstly and when you come to know these are my slow learners try to ask them easy questions just to build their confidence and once you ask them easy questions then they once their confidence is built up definitely they will start working for the difficult ones don't put difficult questions to them then subject related questions uh, how we can make online teaching more intense for practical courses like chemistry in fact of course we cannot conduct a practical through online classes but we can only give the write ups explanation part that how the practical will progress that can be covered through online it will help how in the two hour slot of practicals if we teach them how to do it how to perform it we waste time and practical is very important for understanding of any subject that's why practicals are introduced even in english we have practicals so uh, when we go to the lab if you have already given the write up to them there the time is saved and you can give complete to ask to your student of the, uh, that practical which linguistic components are essential for teaching english firstly phonetics pronunciation part i tell my students the difference between sh and s b and w let them come out of their weaknesses identify the weakness where they lack and then try to help them with the weakness and try to overcome them then uh, another one is i should mention here is vocabulary please read read and read there's uh, no limit to reading and for good vocabulary you need to be well read uh, so, and for uh, whenever you learn some new words try to explain it in the class in the first five minute of the lecture you can discuss some new word hmm? and uh, then uh, if we talk about one app i would like to mention a dictionary.com it is available and uh, you can keep it on your phone and whenever you encounter some difficult word just search in that dictionary you'll get the pronunciation you'll get the phonetic transcription of that word you'll get the, all the usage grammar usage everything will be available on that so uh, always have that handy and it can be downloaded offline also you can use it so uh, that app i would like to recommend you to check your pronunciation time and again before we say something wrong another question how to create derivation classes understood and interesting among students uh, see derivation uh, my subject is english but uh, being a teacher if i have to teach derivation also i would uh, suggest my students to start doing the question and then i'll not see the complete answer first complete your question then come to me won't be my statement i'll go to the weaker ones i'll see whether they've completed the first step at least if they know the first step i'll appreciate that they at least they know the first step don't rely on the last answer only don't judge their whole question on the basis of answer at least go through the steps also see their effort from the beginning the next question is student related my students having good performance but not sincere in assignments uh, i mentioned earlier first we need to be uh, sincere in assignment too when we give them the date of submission give them the date of returning the marks also and uh, if your subject is thorough if your topic is thorough with the student student would love to make the assignment when the concept is clear there is no harm in making assignment when the concept is not clear then they rely on others to help them with the assignments another very important thing assignment means to assess an individual on a particular subject or a particular topic we when we give the assignments we ask them to frame the answers and uh, you can give them in the form of flow charts also tell the sequence of the chapter how the story progress what are the main elements so in that case to help them draw the tabulated form also it is not necessary to take the long long answers we have tests for that we have class work for that we have examination pattern for that so please make your assignments fun 
give few ideas to make kids more attentive in the class involve with every section of your class don't ignore anyone uh, please try to reach to every corner of your classroom how we can motivate students having low percentage of weak students uh, whenever a student is having weak uh, weak or whenever the student is having a low percentage or a student is weak in that case please look at the student try to understand where the student is falling uh, motivate them that is the only thing appreciate their small effort easy questions then in is virtual classroom how students can interact with each other uh, there is an option called teaching uh, chatting sorry in the chatting they can chat individually or with everyone but we don't allow it because it distracts the class so that is the drawback of the virtual classroom we can't allow this, them to interact among themselves when uh, another very important question and i really liked it when i deliver lecture i had humor but students want humor in entire lecture how to tackle this condition what's the harm in humor if your humor is related to the topic then it is really wonderful i would love to teach the whole topic with humor but you need to know the difference are the students making your fun or it is appropriate laughter or your humor is deviated your humor should be linked and we don't get plenty of humor in a particular topic sometimes we try to create that humor we don't get funny moments in the whole lecture sometimes we try to create, look for those small small moments so don't get deviated don't create unnecessary humor but yes try to search for the element of humor one or two is sufficient i must say then more examples on of developing longingness in class uh, students are generally absent if they are unwell someone has broken their arm do ask about their well being we all love that if someone ask us how is your health or we feel bad also this person didn't ask me how i am feeling now uh, i was not well so ask your students if someone is not well and not able to complete the work give them time don't force them give, uh, submit your notebooks as early as possible so this will develop the uh, belongingness feeling and uh, know your students well don't you cannot know them in one hour i assure you you need to be passionate you need to give them time Uh, throughout the day you should be involved and a student should ask you the questions in the, you should ask them well, if someone is absent for a long time you can ask them so there you can develop the belongingness feeling then there were some technical questions that how we can deal with technical errors we need to be polite we need to be sympathetic we can't help it if someone's net pack is exhausted or if we can't help if someone's connection is broken in the middle so we can say okay rejoin be patient no point in showing the lines of frustration on your forehead and then which online tool is better i prefer zoom for my classes and uh, google classroom for my assessment because in google classroom we have the complete sheet of the marks we get a uh, complete sheet of the marks over there then how to deal with the students who have no smartphones or student in the remote areas firstly i said whatever i teach in the google classroom i make the videos and i post it also on the whatsapp group that student living in the remote area should be added in that whatsapp group whenever the student comes from that remote area to the other area at least the student must be having those videos so this can help them whatsapp videos is the only solution small small videos don't make a bigger ones so that whenever they miss something they can see to it the videos are the ready reference for the students then if someone is not having the smartphone then we need to passion be passionate about it give them this liberty that they can give you a call and ask you or to explain some topic or uh, ask you to repeat something so that uh, their financial matter doesn't interfere with their studies so if you have some students in government sector we do have india is a progressive country we all have encounter such students so try to help them try to be easy with them don't be strict with such students mm, so i hope i am able to answer all your questions and lastly thank you director principal the research committee and uh, especially amprit ma'am for giving us this wonderful opportunity to be the part of this ntp thank you <laughs>